good evening. Welcome to church. We're glad that you're here tonight. Those that are in the house, those that are listening out there online, I know we've got uh, folks down at uh, First Church, down at the West Side Gathering, serving there this evening. Uh, but we're glad that you are with us tonight. We hope and pray that you get something out of our time together, that the Lord will bless you, and that we will leave here saying that it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Let's sing together. Hey, there's hymnals in your pews. Okay, you're not going to find any music on the screen tonight, but there are hymnals there in those pews. And let's take our hymnals and turn to page 625. 625 and let's sing together. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Jesus, still our refuge, take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee, take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee, thou wilt find a solace there. Aren't you glad tonight? In the midst of our storms, in the midst of all of our tough things, we can find a solace in Jesus' arms. Aren't you glad tonight that we can just feel those arms wrap around us and know that he is there? But there comes a point, I think, every once in a while where we just have to say, I've got to tell Jesus. Nobody else understands it. I've got to tell Jesus. It's back on page 623. Let's sing together tonight. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He never loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus, all of my troubles he is a kind compassionate friend 
If I but ask him, he will deliver. Make of my troubles quickly and hand. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear these burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Taped it and tried, I need a great Savior, one who can help my burdens to bear. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, he all my cares and sorrows will share. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. Oh, how the world to evil allures me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. I must tell Jesus and he will help me over the world the victory to win. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Have you ever been there? To the point where you just feel like you're going to be overwhelmed completely. But to know that we can tell Jesus and he understands and he cares. Aren't you glad tonight? There's no one that cares for us like Jesus. It's back on page 410. Let's sing together. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus Since I found in him a friend so strong and true I would tell you how he changed my life completely He did something that no other friend could do No one ever cared for me like Jesus there's no other friend so kind as he no one else could take the sin and darkness from me oh how much he cares for me oh my life was full of sin when Jesus found me all my heart was full of misery and woe. Jesus placed his strong and loving arms around me. And he led me in the way I ought to go. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he no one else can take the sin and darkness from me oh how much he cared for me every day he comes to me with new assurance more and more i understand his words of love but I'll never know just why he came to save me 
Till someday I see his blessed face above. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. Amen. Aren't you glad for that tonight? Let's stand together tonight as we get ready to go to the Lord in prayer. A couple requests that we want to remember tonight. Continue to pray for Kenny Cochran, young man in hospice care, needs a liver transplant. Let's continue to remember this young man in our prayers. Danny Lucas was taken to the hospital. We'll have heart cath tomorrow, and we want to be sure and remember Danny in our prayers. Continue to pray for Jacob White. It's a young man that plays baseball with uh, Jaden, uh, was injured in a game the other day, and uh, had to have surgery. And so let's just remember this young man that God would uh, be with him and be with that family throughout this tough time. Do you have unspoken requests tonight that you want to to make known by an uplifted hand. Aren't you glad the Lord knows what those are? We don't have to call them out. Not everybody needs to know everything. But there is one that already knows and he's already begun to work on your behalf. And that's the one that we're leaning on. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. You know, sometimes we fail. Sometimes we mess up. But we're learning. That's the key. That we're learning more and more and more every day to lean on him. Let's sing this old chorus together this evening. Learning to lean, learning to lean, I'm learning to Finding more power than I ever dreamed. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Learning to lean, learning to lean. I'm learning to lean on Jesus finding more power than I ever dreamed I'm learning to lean on Jesus we're going to sing that again in just a moment you know, many years ago, uh, we did college prayer partners around Elk River. There was a lady that prayed for my daughter for years, Edith Fisher. That's Sue's mom, in case you don't know. We had a lot of confidence in those prayers. And I have a lot of confidence in Sue McMinn's prayers as well. You know, we, we have people that we look at throughout the church and you just know if you need somebody to pray for you, Jack Coodle, you know Jack's going to pray. You know people are praying, and I'm grateful for that. But we're going to sing this again, and I'm going to walk down here, and I'm going to give Sue the mic. I'm kind of hitting her off balance or hitting her out, uh, out of left field maybe. But you know I have a lot of confidence in Sue's prayers, just like we did her mom's. And I'm going to ask Sue to lead us in prayer. But let's sing together tonight. Learning to lean, learning to lean. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Finding more power than I ever dreamed I'm learning
with us tonight. We pray for each of these requests that have been made known tonight. We pray for this young man that was hurt in a ball game. We pray for this one that's waiting on a, a, a liver transplant. We, Lord, you know all about these needs. We just ask that you be with us tonight. We ask that you would help us this week to be Jesus to someone. We pray that we'll be able to share our smile with someone, make someone feel better for being uh, in our presence. Thank you for all your many blessings. We ask these things in your name tonight. Amen. Amen. And before you sit down, turn and find somebody and just wave at them and tell them you're glad they're here. just keep playing if just in an attitude of prayer if we can just bow our heads and close our eyes tonight okay let's remember Jack and Karen's son uh, had bypass surgery and is having a tough time let's keep him in our prayers Father, tonight, before we change the order of the service and go another direction, we just want to lift up this one. This one that's been through bypass surgery. And, Father, we realize as parents that it doesn't matter how old they get, they're still our kids. And we love them like nobody else. So, Father, tonight we just lift up Jack and Karen's son to you. Because we know tonight, Lord, that you are working in his life. You are strengthening him. But, Father, he's going through some tough times. I just pray that right now the hand of God would reach down to him. Wherever he might be. Might he sense your peace, presence, and power in a very mighty way. May he know tonight that there's a God that loves him and a God that cares about him. And Father, may he realize and know tonight there's churches, not just his home church, but this church tonight that's praying for him. We're petitioning the throne room of God and asking, Father, tonight that you would go and that you would speak peace to his heart. 
and you would bring healing to that body. Father, I just pray that in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that you would just touch him from the bottom of his feet to the top of his head. And may he feel you and know that you are with him and that you have not forgotten about him, that even in these tough times, you're there. And Father, may he learn to lean on you even more throughout this time of his life. And may he always give you praise, honor, and glory for what you're doing and what you're going to do. Father, be all that he needs you to be. Be all that his family needs you to be. Meet the needs, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Let me give you just a couple real quick announcements. Don't forget, next week is Mother's Day. We'll be recognizing all the mothers in our service, and so you'll want to be here for Mother's Day. Also, on the 15th, uh, Good News Sunday. We have about 10 people signed up out there now. We only need about 60 more uh, to pull this thing off. Guys, it's a big event, and we need you to get signed up out there on the sign-up sheet. We need people to work in the kitchen. We need people to work games. We need people uh, to just sit around at some of the events and, and, and kind of corral some kids every once in a while. Uh, but we're going to have a great day. And, you know, the Lord's going to be with us, and uh, it's our job to reach out to our community and tell them about a God that loves them and a God that cares about them. And that is what we do on Good News Sunday. Okay, we give free hot dogs to them. We give them chips. We give them water. We give them uh, all kinds of stuff. We play a lot of games, have a lot of activities for them. But, you know, it's more than just having an activity. It's a way of reaching out to our community and telling them, hey, Elk River is here, and Elk River is here for you. And so if you'd be willing to help sign up out on the Welcome Center out in uh, the foyer, we would appreciate that. Also, church elections will be the 15th and the 22nd, and you'll want to be sure all the members of the church be here those Sundays so that you can vote. So, well, all the way back from Myrtle Beach, tan and everything, I think you'll still recognize him. Would you pray for Pastor Mike as he comes and shares for us tonight? Thank you, Joe. Thank you all for being here. I shared with you when I had my pacemaker how good God was. And I want to share another how good God is, a God thing, if I might. Joe said we've been down Myrtle Beach and we had our camper. We're coming back Friday. The trip had been really good. We left an hour and a half later than one or two. Not my fault. And we're coming up the road, and we get over here on the interstate next to the state capitol. Cindy was driving because my eyes were still bad, and that my perspective perception is off. She's driving about 60 miles an hour. There were cars on the left and cars behind us. And all of a sudden, we see a full, real heavy couch laying in the road in front of us. Nobody had headed or anything. On the right of that, we see a, a man and he's running, he's in a pickup truck, and you could tell that, that that couch had bounced off of his pickup truck. He looked to me like that man never run before in his life, but he was doing some running that day. So we get closer, and, and we couldn't just stop in the road, and we couldn't go over very far, and Cindy did a really great job. We got, we got really close to the car on the left, and they scooted a little bit, and that couch couldn't have missed us by, by six or eight inches on either side. Had, it, had we hit it, it would have probably rolled under the truck, Roll back to the camper. We would probably try to stop. People would have wrecked into us and we'd have wrecked into them. That's a God thing. And I promise God that I'd always take time on those God things and witness how good God has been to me and to my wife. God bless you. Um, I won't go there just yet. I want to preach tonight on revival fires a burning. A burning. Now, revival fires a burning. And, and I'm going to start, we hear, by the way, thank you, Joe and Susan. We hear a lot about revival today. It seems like everywhere you go, and I heard some preaching last week, and everybody's crying out for revival, for revival. And that's a good thing, amen? 
But I want to tell you, I believe there's another part of it. I believe we should continue to pray for revival and reach out for revival. America needs revival. The world needs revival. Amen? And, and, and we just, we just got to get there. There's strong preaching throughout the world today that we got to have revival. God's people need a revival. Included in these prayers, a, a Holy Ghost Spirit-filled revival. And sometimes we just miss the Holy Ghost. I did a sermon some years ago, and, and it seemed like that the Spirit in the church had just kind of slowed down a little bit. And, and I preached a message that if we had a closet in the front or the back of the church, it doesn't matter. It seems like God's people want to take the Holy Spirit and lock the Holy Spirit in that closet and only let out the little bit that suits their fancy. That's not the way the Holy Spirit works. We've got to turn full, loose with the power of the Holy Spirit. But we're not going to have a revival, I don't believe yet. I believe we are going to have a great revival as we approach end days. But, but why aren't we having it? And I do believe, and I want to say this again, I do believe before Christ returns, we're going to see a great re- worldwide revival. I believe that. You can, you know. Just my Opinion. I'm, I'm going to give you some opinions. By the way, you know, we watch a lot of TV. We watch law, the old Law and Orders and some of those. And they all say that this may not reflect the views of the network. This may not reflect all of Pastor Randy's view. If I do something wrong, tell Cindy. She'll tell me. You don't have to tell me. Won't you, Cindy? We, uh, we were at Clinton and I, I preached what I thought was a pretty decent sermon. And about six of us go to a new restaurant over in town. And we're all sitting there. You know, how, you know how they all do the preacher. Good sermon. Good sermon. So finally, I just looked at, well, what was the sermon about? They all scratched their head and put their head down. Not a one could remember what that sermon was all about. That hurts. Holy Spirit takes care of that. The church and the church people are comfortable with needing and wanting and professing the need for revival, but do we really, really, really want it, and are we, are we ready for a revival? Now, you say, what is he talking about? Do you guess what we're doing? No, that's not what I'm saying. But when you get down, and I want to read two things to you, if I might. The, the worldly definition of revival includes an improvement in the condition or strength of something or an instance of something becoming popular, active, or important again. But then I began to research, and what is the biblical definition for revival? And pay attention. You may want to set this somewhere in your mind. The awakening or quickening of God's people to their true nature and their purpose. You see, revival starts with the church. I've heard people, they want to measure revival by the number of people that are saved. Nothing wrong with that. But revival starts when you and I, When the body of the church, when we let the Holy Spirit just fill us and take total control of us and do things that are pleasing to God that would earn a revival. I don't believe churches are doing that. I'm not talking about our church. I'm talking about all all the church. I just don't think that we're doing that. We talk revival seeing people saved, but is that in the confines of the definition? The church must return to its roots. The roots of the church is Jesus Christ and people being saved. And then the saints growing stronger. Say, Mike, who are the saints? You and I are saints. If we're forgiven, the Bible says we're saints. Now, I'm not going to go home tonight and say anything about Saint Cindy. Not going to happen. No, Cindy. When people want and change and sacrifice, there will be a revival. When, when we purpose in our hearts and minds that we want a revival, when we just melt down our hearts, when we, Kevin, I loved you coming up here. I loved you coming up here because I believe with all my heart that we really need to get out and, and take advantage of the altar. We've got to want revival. People feel like they're, 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 it's something, some, Shame on going to revival. Well, maybe they think I did something wrong. I want to tell you what. It's time the church, when there's a need, it could be the revival in your heart. It could be an altar in your heart. But we need to come to this altar or any altar and lift up the name of Jesus and say, Father, I want revival. What do I need to do within myself to make this happen? Come on, church. It's uncomfortable, isn't it? 
It's uncommon me to preach. I spent about four hours last night. I didn't want to preach this message. I woke up at 1 o'clock, and God wouldn't let me go back to sleep because I had another outline and everything ready to go. And I said, Lord, I don't want to preach this. It's, it's, it's hard on our people. But the church has got to get ready for revival. We were pastoring a church one time, and everybody come to me, and Pastor Randy, I think, can relate to it. People come to me and say, we want to have a revival meeting. What's a revival meeting? I don't understand that. So we, we scheduled this highfalutin preacher. You know, he kept his tie just right, and he looked so good, and he could use all these eloquent words, and omnipotent, and omniscient, and omnipotent, and all this kind of stuff. I didn't understand a word he said. I was a, I, a pretty new preacher. I said, what is he talking about and everything? And, but it finally got, got to where we understood. We scheduled a revival and about a third of the church came. But everybody would beat up and said, we want to have a revival. If you're going to push on the preacher to have a revival, one, pray for it, and two, be willing to come and be a part of it. I didn't get any amens to that. I hope I'm on somebody's toes besides mine. First time, and we hadn't been converted very long, and preacher called a revival and we had a pretty big farm and we had close to 100 acres we planted a big garden he scheduled it right in right in may or june right at planting time i went to him and i said preacher coleman i don't care if you know who it was i said preacher coleman why are you scheduling a revival at planting time i said i gotta get this stuff in the ground and and, and you know if you ever had a garden you got to get it in the ground you got to get it in the right time you plant potatoes on the the eyes of march and all this this stuff and everything he said mike we're going to i just feel like we ought to and i kept i Week after week, I just chat him about, why are we doing this at, re- at planting time? It come to the revival, and I purposed it. I'd go. Went the first night, so I'll go tonight. It was sunny, kind of like it is out tonight. It was so pretty, I'm thinking the whole time. But listen to the evangelist. I said, I need to be planting my potatoes. Next night, I went. Good service. I went. Sunny, pretty. I need to be planting my tomatoes. This is not exactly what I was planning in the order. And, and this goes on for a week. And it was the prettiest week we had had all spring. And I went to him and said, Preacher, see what you've done to me. I said, I can't get my garden in. And the next week it rained. I couldn't do it that week either. The next week it was pretty. We planted the garden. And it grew as good as anything you can ever see. I'm trying to make let's have revival but it starts with you and with me I'm not talking just to our church I'm talking about to all the churches across the land and by the way when we talk about I'm bad about talking about America I love America but we got a world to think about wasn't it great to have the missionaries here today I told somebody a while ago I sure don't want to be a missionary they got hard work to do I want to read to you out of 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 through 18. Would you stand just for a moment, please? And a lot of people use this scripture, you know, talk about it a bit. But I think we miss emphasis on one verse. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 15 through 18. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain to the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then with which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and show shall we ever be with the Lord. But listen to the last verse. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Father, we love you. We lift up your word. God, I need your Holy Spirit. Bless our congregation. Bless your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we, we, we know that Paul's teaching was centered on the fact he thought that Jesus was going to come the next day. He, had, he thought Jesus was going to come the next day in his writings. He just didn't know, and he was anxious for Jesus' return. The old Judaism way had begun to sneak its way back into the church, and they were preaching all these false doctrines and, and all this kind of stuff. And, and they had got this doctrine where they, they believed that if somebody died before Jesus came, they wouldn't be in the kingdom. And Paul wanted them to know that, that that's not the case, that heaven's for everybody that's a believer, whether you die today, tomorrow, or whether you're alive when Jesus returns. Amen? And so, but he says to comfort one another with these words. I got about four points in this message. One of them is we need to comfort one another with God's word, knowing that we shall spend eternity together. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? 
I love it. Comfort is essential to understanding. Christ hasn't returned yet. I don't know why not. But he hasn't. And, and the word teaches us that, that Christ doesn't know, not even the angels know, only God the Father knows when Jesus will return. A lot of people try to come up and come with these dates and everything, and it just didn't happen. But until he comes, there's a couple of things, I think, and you could, whoever's preaching this could preach different things. Two things we really got to carry out. One, grow in the word. You and I are supposed to grow in the word. Say Amen. I've heard preachers from a pulpit say, well, you can't, you can't use a, a phone and, and read the scripture, or you can't read one of these, these readers. Yes, you can. Doesn't matter where you're reading it, it's God's word. I'm glad we don't have the parchment paper because I spilled coffee on it. And then it would all tear up and everything. And we, we need to quit this silly stuff of quibbling over silly stuff. Do you like that? I know what I said. But, but we do. And that's, that holds us back from letting the Holy Spirit have full reign tonight. And the other ones, the Great Commission, the end of Matthew, we've got to win others to Christ. And I'm afraid that we've kind of forgotten that. And, and, and Pastor Randy, I believe this point, hit that nail right smack, right smack dab on the head when he was, when he was talking. We no longer can, can, can take care of it so much in the church because people no longer come to the physical church like they used to. It's not unique to this church. It's unique to the world, and there's a lot of, a lot of studies and everything. So our mission, our charge, is to go out and to win them, go out where they are. Nod your heads, anyhow. We've got to learn that we've got, we've got to do that. I had a, a friend that we were talking. I'm, I'm pretty fascinated by Christ's return, as you can, you can probably tell. And I do believe he's going to return. I believe, I believe it's getting very, very near to that date and everything. But I was talking with this man, and, and you know, I'm ready to go. My sins are forgiven. I, I believe if Christ returned today, I'd be with him for all eternity. Amen? How about you? Can you say amen to that? We, we are, and we, we, need to be, we need to be thankful for that. And I was explaining to my, to my friend there, that I said, but it really bothers me. As ready as I am to go, it really bothers me that my kids aren't ready. That my grandkids aren't ready. That my neighbors aren't ready. Some of my friends aren't ready. And he said, they don't bother me about my kids. Why not? He said, I'm okay. And I don't have to worry about that. I'll tell you what. It's our job, according to the Great Commission at the end of Matthew, to tell others and to win others to Jesus Christ. Listen to me. It's our job to do that. As we know the return is near, Satan knows that the return is near too. He's so consumed in himself, Satan just can't get it. He can't get that he's a loser. Come on, Satan can't get, he, he's lost. And we know that he's lost, we've got to go through, through these things till we get there. We're, we're in a great battle, and a lot of people talk about spiritual warfare and this. I just want to summarize it, we're in a great battle. And Satan, I believe, is making his final stands upon the earth today. Just look around at some of the things that are going on. I was talking to Pastor Randy this week, and I believe there are many antichrists. And antichrist is anybody that doesn't believe in Jesus. Say amen. But I believe there's going to be an antichrist that's going to possess a lot of charm and, and deceit. He's going to look good. He's going to appear to have all the answers. But he's the antichrist. The only one with all the answers is our Savior, Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad that we know him personally? Aren't you glad that we have the hymnals and we sing the songs about Jesus? Excuse me. Satan is, and we've read about it so many times, he's like a lion seeking whom he can devour. I'm ready for Jesus' return. I feel sorry, my friend, that he doesn't get that. But my kids, they're not ready. My stepson's not ready. My grandkids aren't ready. Cindy's dad is not, re is not ready. We need to tell people about Jesus. Sorry about that. Say, Mike, what does this all have to do with revival? And, and it does have to do with revival. Jesus will return, and we must be ready. We must be ready. But how about the world? How about those in Southeast Asia like we talked about today? It's not just America. It's the world that's in trouble today. 
And I'll talk some more about that. Scripture tells us in very plain, there's only one door, only one way to eternal life. Do you know that, that, that the ark only had one door? Did you know that? The ark had one door for him to come into. I think that kind of points to Jesus. We'll come, no, we're not going to come back to that. Then you remember the story of the, the ten virgins and, and how the bridegroom was coming and they, they, they wanted to be there and, and they, they went off and, 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 and they got word the bridegroom was coming and, and some of them had tarried. They didn't fill their, they didn't put oil in their lamps. And they got the word and five of them went in. One door. They went in one door. Five couldn't make it in. One door. Jesus tells us, this is what the scripture says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me, John 14, 6. He didn't say he is a way to the Father. He didn't say there are other ways. He says, I am the way. The is singular. Christ is saying, I am the only way to God the Father. And too many people today, too many religions, too many of these, these fancy guys and gals that's trying to preach something, they, they get away from that. I want to tell you what, without the blood of Jesus covering our sins, we are not going to be there. Come on, church. Can we get how important that is? We've got to embrace... I don't want to go there yet. As time for Christ returns nigh, Satan's on a rampage, and, and we see it. We want to fix everything ourselves or blame somebody else. The world doesn't want to accept the responsibility, and a large part of what's going on is the Christian's responsibility. We need to pray. We need to come back to church. We need to tell others about Jesus. We need to uh, teach people. We need to walk the straight and narrow way. We need to focus and put our eyes on Jesus Christ. That's the only way. Jesus is the only, only answer. I'm going to give you a list, but, but, but here's some things that people over the last, there's many more, and, and let me get through before you fuss at me. These, these names I'm going to give you and things, they're not going to do it. Not Trump, but Jesus Christ. Not Biden, but Jesus Christ. Not Putin, but Jesus Christ. Not Joel Olstein, but Jesus Christ. Not the church building, but Jesus Christ. Not Elon Musk, but Jesus Christ. Not Jim Justice or Baby Dog, but Jesus Christ. Not money, but Jesus Christ. Not drugs, but Jesus Christ. Not prestige, but Jesus Christ. No COVID shot. Only the blood of Jesus. That's the only hope that we have. These things that we've made gods, these things that we've given all this importance and priority to, they don't mount to a hill of beans. Do they? Do they? So why does the church let our, let our focus? I'm talking about those Baptists and Methodists and all those others. We don't do that. Jesus is the only way. The word teaches that. I said we got to quit talking revival and have revival. It belongs with us, the church, not the church building, but you and I. Believers, you and I have to live a holy life. We need to give God our all, not just, not, not just a, a little bit of it, not just when it's, when it's convenient. Wouldn't it have been awful when we're driving down the road? Wouldn't it have been awful if that couch rolled over and those, the vehicles to our left and the, the vehicles behind us and all? Wouldn't it have been awful if we couldn't have said and God heard us right then? Lord, help us! But we could. And he hears our prayer. Isn't it great to be in, in that situation? We've got to ask for and accept sanctification. Another sermon, another day. We've got to embrace Jesus with our all. I've shared this with you way too many times. I probably will every time I preach. But we, we want to do Jesus like microwave popcorn. Now, I love popcorn. Nod your heads. I love popcorn. I think everybody knows it. And with a microwave, we got this fancy super duper thing. You take that plastic off the pack and you and you put it in there and you press three and you get you go to the refrigerator, open your coke. By the time you got your coke open and a napkin, you, your popcorn's ready. Ready for the Jesus don't work like that. We need to take time and pray, Kevin. We need to take time and lift up his name. We need to take time and thank him. The church needs to be on fire for Jesus. That's how revival is going to come. And that starts with you and me being on fire for Jesus. I won't share with you who, but I saw somebody today in church texting back and forth for about five minutes. Now, unless that's an emergency, 
They just plumb don't get it. See, pastor couldn't say that, but I can. Okay? They wasn't, they wasn't letting up Scripture. We've got to embrace him and give him our all. And that's when we give with our time. And people said to me, Mike, I struggle with praying. My mind will go somewhere else. So does mine sometimes. But you see, we've got to focus and put it back on Jesus. And when Satan comes in and brings this stuff to our mind that's not according to God, we've got to give back and say, God, help me. And, and maybe two or three times, but eventually you'll pray to the point that where Satan says, well, I'm tired of fooling with him tonight. I'm going to go mess with Kevin or Nellie. And he will. Amen? Not just enough to know that there's a God, but we've got to embrace him. We've got to accept his son. We've got to ask for forgiveness of sins and walk in the light. I, I get, I, I, I wanted to use this in two or three messages, so y'all go help me be guinea pigs, okay? I, I love sports. Randy Lipson told me that sports were great. Okay, I want to make sure, I want to make sure everybody got that. But you sometimes you see these guys and they'll run and they'll catch a touchdown over their head. I can't even see the ball that far. And they'll get up and they'll do the sign, ever how you do it. They'll, they'll do the sign of the cross, point to Jesus. I want to tell you, what, if their sins aren't forgiven, that point to Jesus doesn't mean a thing. I'm afraid that we're putting out funny pictures to the world that's not so. We make heroes out of these, these sports guys and, and these singers. Joe, is, did Joe have to leave? I felt sorry for Joe tonight. I can't sing a lick. I'm sitting right there, and Joe's singing these songs, and Joe's a happy man, amen? He's a happy man, and I'm singing out loud because I purposed, I purposed that I'm going to sing, and if you don't like it, and I'll get you off tune, move over. Y'all got that? And Joe's there, and I'm saying, he's hearing every word I'm saying, and he's thinking, man, I wish he'd get on key. How do I know that Joe's on key? How do I know he's not the one that's wrong? Just saying. Just saying. It wasn't funny, Susan. Not saying at all that we should quit praying for revival. In fact, we should pray harder and harder and harder for revival than, than, we're praying, than we're praying now. But we need to put action. We need to put feet on our prayers. We need to ask people to church. But more than asking about church, tell them what Jesus has done for you. Tell them about how he forgave your sins. Lead them to Jesus. Tell them how your life changed. I want to tell you, my life changed. Did your life change? Then tell somebody. Amen? Tell somebody. Don't quit praying about it. We need to tell others about Jesus. I'm going to, I'll probably get in trouble. Y'all need to pray for me. Will you pray for me? I'm going to ask Cindy's dad. He's coming down the house at 10 o'clock tomorrow. I'm going to ask to go to church with me next Sunday. I don't know what he'll say, but I'm going to ask him. Somebody say amen. And there's all kinds of Joes out there that need to accept Jesus as their Savior. If we don't put this message out when Christ comes, they're going to be lost. My heart breaks for my kids and my grandkids and those folks I told you about. Not just America we worry about. It's the world. Jesus just didn't die for America. He died for sinners worldwide. I believe that it's even more important that we preach this message today than yesterday. And we know that the Bible tells us that the signs of the time as a song are everywhere. They'll say there's a brand new feeling in the air. Some of the signs, and I'll, I'll give you some examples, not spend a lot of time because it's a separate message. Wars and rumors of war. You can't turn on TV unless you see something about Ukraine. I'm tired of hearing about Luke, Ukraine. Let's talk about Jesus. He's the answer, amen? Come on, isn't Jesus the answer? Let me give you some, some ideas. The Bible talks about famine in the last days and how things will burn. And even after I made, finished up getting my notes framed this evening, Cindy told me about another. 31 processing plants in America have burned in the last several months. So let that settle in your mind. 31 food processing plants in America. Wasn't terrorism, they don't think. They... they We've had a shortage of truckers. We've had a shortage of workers. The topsoil in the bread belt of America out there in that Midwest and everything has been swept away, has been farmed to death, meaning that we're not, we're not making as much 
produce as we used to make and all. The drought out west and all the fires. Have you seen anything like the fires that are going on with the Santa Ana winds and everything? The Bible talks about a great falling away in the last days. I hear so many preachers talk about that falling away means people coming to church. We're seeing people falling away from coming to church. Amen? Amen? And the other part of that falling away, people are falling away from the word. The word is as true today as, as it was yesterday, and it's relevant today. I've had people say, well, that, that Bible, it's old and hard to read. Then, then read a New King James or read a NIV. And I've heard people fight, well, if, if you've got one of those worldly Bibles, it's not, that translation, it's not any good. That's garbage. If it'll lead you to Jesus Christ, it's good. Somebody say amen. Turmoils and earthquakes. Only one answer, Jesus. We get concerned about, about the seas. We had a, we had a unique time while we, while we were camping this year in all of them. And, and the winds blew, oh, the wind blew, the wind blew so hard. And we were in a couple 60 mile an hour winds. That camper just kind of bouncing back and forth like this. And this one time I'm sitting on the couch kind of, kind of watching the, the weather. And then he says, if it blows like that, I'm, I'm leaving one, I'm leaving. I said, we're going to go to the bathhouse. I'm, I'm afraid. Jesus calmed the sea. Jesus calmed, calmed the wind. Jesus is our hope. He's our trust. Amen. The word has been preached throughout the world. So I said, well, one more person hasn't heard it. You're taking the scripture too, too messed up when you say every last individual. It will be available to everybody in the world, I believe. I like the fact that people here, they were talking about YouTube. Can you imagine that, that you're in, in Southeast Asia and they hook up YouTube and they're having some of their district meetings and some of their get-togethers and everything by, by electronic means. And I want to tell you what, it's not nearly as good as being here. When I see your face, when Pastor Randy sees your face, now I love seeing you. When I, I can't explain, I just love seeing you. When I come in, that's good, isn't it? Isn't it good to be with our brothers and sisters? I want America back. I took an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Bear true faith and allegiance. I love this country. People say, well, it's God's fault. It's not God's fault. We, man, are the ones that messed up. If we want America back, and I do, if we want the world back, we've got to reach out to Christ and follow after him. If it were a sin yesterday, I'm talking about sin according to the Bible, not some of these man-made conjectures. If it were a sin yesterday, it's a sin today. If the Holy Spirit were real yesterday, the Holy Spirit's real today and tomorrow. Over, I believe it's in Genesis, God said, I am that I am. Me that he was yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It's about time we got a hold of who God really is. So why do you preach this to us? A few people can start a worldwide revival if we just let our hearts do what it needs to do. The fields are harvest. The fields are, do you not say, for months and more than the harvest. I tell you, open your eyes. Look at the fields. They're ripe for the harvest. We've got to be careful and not get down because people aren't coming to church. They may say, I've had people say, I've invited them five times, invite them ten. Or invite somebody else. Tell them about, about Jesus. I read, this, I read the scripture that stated, comfort one another with these words. Comfort one another with these words. Jesus is going to return. You and I that know him, we know how our eternity shall be. For those that are lost, my kids, my grandkids, your kids, your grandkids, your families, no more chances is going for them. I'm going to ask you tonight, and Susan, if you'll play something for me, please. I'm going to ask you tonight to be willing. We're just going to have a... You don't need to kneel, just come up and stand there on the altar, take somebody's hand, you're afraid of COVID, and wash them when you leave, it's okay. But I want to take time and, and us, us purpose that as these that are here tonight, 
that we will take time and thank, let the Holy Spirit work with us and tell us about how important it is, one, that you and I are ready. Because Jesus is going to come. Jesus is going to come. Come on, church. Jesus is going to come. That's worth about a dozen amens. Jesus is going to come. I've got 11. Jesus is going to come. I'll ask for forgiveness because I really didn't know how many. And for the believers will be with him eternity. For those that don't know him. Come up. Let's have a closing prayer. Can we? Come on up. Come on up. Everything that I am, I was nothing, and today I'm just a heathen saved by grace. That's what I can claim. But I love Him. I know my sins are forgiven. But if I had to look at Him face to face today, I can't truly say I've done everything that I could do to win people. And I want to do more for Him, not for me. Father God, we, we love you. God, I, I love your word. And Lord, as we, we look at how things are and, and we've read and we've heard that Jesus is going to return. And God, we believe that. We wouldn't be here tonight if we didn't believe that. And God, we're so thankful in our hearts that we know. We know that we're okay. But God, on the other side of that, we've got broken hearts for those that, that don't know this this event that we're going to have, Lord, that will reach out to the community. We just pray, Lord, we pray that people can see Jesus living in us. And God, not, not just for this church, but they will, they will get rooted in the faith. They'll ask for forgiveness if they're sinners, Lord, and walk with you. God, for, for my family and for the families and for the friends of each person here, God, we pray for holy conviction power, that God, during the middle of the night, that God, you'd awaken us. Remind us, Lord, to pray, to pray, to pour out our hearts and to pour out our minds. God, I don't know what else to say except we love you. We know that we're okay. We know that Jesus is going to return, and we thank you. We thank you for that. God, we have a heavy heart, and let us stay true to what your word teaches us. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you, Lord.